Happy Monday, y'all. So today we're going to be discussing miracles. I want to tell some personal experiences, um, something that I did wrong when the Lord was providing a miracle for me. So, cause there's a right way and a wrong way to ask and to seek and to expect a miracle. So if you're praying for something right now, um, and you're trying to like get through it and trying to figure out how do I get an answer to this prayer or this miracle or blessing, whatever it is that you're needing. Um, I hope that my story and these scriptures, I hope that this helps you today. Get out your scriptures for sure though, because we're going to be doing a lot of correlation because I was just being taught by the spirit while I was gardening and it was, it was wonderful and also overwhelming. So I want to be able to present this, um, hopefully with confidence. We'll see. Okay, so let's talk. Well, first, when we're, when we're talking about miracles or prayers that we're praying, um, make sure, first of all, this is, probably is obvious, but you need to make sure that it's the Lord's will, right? Because if it's not his will, then the miracle or that prayer, that thing that you're praying for, it's it's not going to happen, okay? Or it might happen just not in the way that you want it to happen, okay? So learn how to get personal revelation. Okay, so this... The next thing is once you know that that's your miracle, like let's say you've had, maybe you've had a dream or you've had all these signs and all these things that just, you know, it's not a coincidence. So you know that that's your miracle. So once you know, um, then let's kind of walk through things that we can read in the scriptures of um, what to do and what not to do. Okay. All right. So the first thing, when you know that, that God's going to provide a miracle for you and you're just praying for it. Um, the first thing you want to do, obviously, is have faith, right? So let's talk about faith. Um, when we turn to uh, Matthew 17, we learn about the faith of a mustard seed. And so, you know, some some people have that, right? Like they just they just have that kind of faith, that they are moving mountains. And there's times in my life where I've had that kind of faith. Like, I know that the Lord will provide this miracle, and I have that kind of faith, the faith of a mustard seed which is funny because the faith of a mustard seed is teeny, teeny, tiny, like me, physically, not spiritually. I'm not teeny, tiny, or verbally, or mentally. There's a lot. I'm big in all those ways, but physically I'm tiny. Okay, what? Let's go. <laughs> so we have that scripture, but when we go back, let's look at um, the woman with the issue of blood. So that's a great example of someone who had the faith to move a mountain because when this woman, um, she shouldn't even have been out in public, right? Like she was considered unclean. So she shouldn't have even been touching anyone. And here she was in this crowded area and she's has so much faith that she's like, if, if I can just touch, you know, the hem of his garment, I'm going to be healed. So that's, that kind of faith is what we're talking about. When we have that, the miracles are performed, right? But maybe you know this miracle is yours, it's coming, but maybe you don't have that kind of faith. Maybe you feel like, I don't know, like, I don't know if I have that kind of faith for this miracle. Okay, it's okay. That's okay. Let's look at, um, let's first turn to Alma, right? Let's go to Alma 32. Alma 32 is very famous because it talks about the seed, right? Not the mustard seed, but just the faith of, of, of a seed, right? Where you're going to plant it. So this isn't just about missionary work. This is also about miracles. And this is a great chapter to read because he talks about signs, right? So you want to make sure that the signs of your miracle, that they're, well, that they're signs from the Lord and not from the adversary. Remember, there's opposition in all things, right? Um, and you don't want to be like a sign seeker either, right? Well, there's a lot. There's a lot in this. But let's go to... Um, Alma 32, verse 21, it says, And now, as I said concerning faith, faith is not to have a perfect knowledge of things. Therefore, if ye have faith, ye hope for things which are not seen, which are true. So maybe you you can't see how this miracle is going to work out. Like maybe it looks like, maybe you look at your miracle and you're like, I know the Lord wants to provide this miracle for me, but it looks like it's going backwards. So maybe it's unseen. Okay, well, don't give up. And maybe you don't have a perfect knowledge. Well, that's okay, right? Because when we um, go down to verse 27, it says, um, it talks about how if you can no more than desire to believe, that's enough. 
So if the Lord is telling you, this is your miracle, I'm going to answer this prayer. And if you don't have the perfect knowledge or the faith of a mustard seed, that's okay. I can work with you just having the desire to want to believe that I'm going to provide this for you. And we see that um, in our in our Come Follow Me from last week, right? Um, and Matthew, I'm just going to read this little section because I love it. Um, Matthew 17, right? It says, the heading says, when seeking greater faith, I can start with the faith that I have. So that's just like, you just want to have faith, right? It's that little particle. It says, the father mentioned in Matthew 17 and Mark 9 had reasons to feel uncertain that Jesus could heal his son. He had asked Jesus' disciples to heal his son, and they could not. But when he asked the Savior for a miracle, he chose to express faith. Lord, I believe, he said. Then, in acknowledgement that his faith was not perfect, he added, Help thou mine unbelief. Oh, it's so good because this is the story of the lunatic, right? His son, um, and just watching all of that, and he he was just desperate. And he's like, I don't know if I can believe. I don't know if I have the faith of a mustard seed that you can help my son, but I want to have that kind of faith, right? So there's a lot of that correlation. So maybe that's where you're at, and, and that's okay. Just stick stick with the faith that you have because he can work with that. Okay, now let's jump down to what not to do, okay? <laughs> so um, in 1999, when I was 19, the Lord told me that I was going to serve a mission. And I I really didn't believe it. Um, I just, I didn't. And he was like, Beth, you will. I'm, I'm showing you. And he was giving me dreams. And I'm not going to share that today. But he kept giving me dreams. And then he started to change my mind. But it still looked impossible because... I was so poor and there were, there's a lot of things that, you know, you have to have medical insurance. You have to have all the stuff to go on a mission, right? Luggage, everything. It's, it's a lot and it's a lot of money. And we were very poor and my parents couldn't, and my dad wouldn't even help me with something like that. So it looked impossible. Um, so when he started to tell me that I was going to serve a mission and, and then in, in my, I had the, I had the faith that it was going to happen, but I, I ended up making a wrong choice because I wanted to um, hurry it along. Does that make sense? So um, what I ended up doing was I, do you remember that, you know, that scripture, faith without works is dead. So that's what I thought. Okay, well, faith without works is dead. Well, I have faith that, that I'm going to go on a mission because I've seen it. I've seen it in my dreams and I know that's what he's telling me to do. But if I don't do the works, then it's not going to happen. So. I was working at Sears in the women's department and uh, I lived in a small town called New Albany, Indiana. I'm wearing my sweatshirt today. New Albany High School. Um, it's like right across the bridge from Louisville, Kentucky. So that's where my family's from. So that's where the accent comes from. So um, in, in the 90s, in the late 90s, a casino boat came um, and this was like a huge deal because it was going to bring in so much money and revenue and jobs. And it was a big thing. And so while I was working at Sears, someone came to me and they're like, Beth, I'm going to get a job on the casino boat. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, well, I'm not 21 yet. And they're like, no, 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 no. You can work on the dock. And they are hiring people um, that are 18 or, or over and they're playing, they're paying good money. Guys, I think it was like $8 an hour plus tips which was huge back in like the 90s. That was a big deal, okay? So imagine me at, you know, 19 years old, knowing I'm going to go on a mission, knowing I have no money. Um, and so and then I'm like, okay, I need to work towards this and help this miracle. So I need money for this, right? So I thought, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go and, and get a job on the casino boat. So that's what I did. Um, and it, it worked out that I knew um, the manager of this little coffee shop. Um, he was good friends with my dad. So he didn't even interview me. I didn't have to even, like, nothing. He was just like, Beth, I know you. And you're responsible and I trust you. You got the job. So I got the job. And I was um, bussing tables. And, and I had you had to wear, like, a uniform, like a white blouse and black pants or skirt. And so I was, like, bussing tables and making... Um, coffees and serving and all this stuff and um and then 
sorry, I'm just trying to get this right. So then, um, you know, I'm very vocal about my, my faith, right? And so the assistant manager found out that I was a Latter-day Saint and he started asking questions and I started like, like I got really excited. I'm just like telling him everything. Um, and then he found out that I was, um, unexperienced, if you know what I mean. And then all of a sudden he started speaking and doing things that were inappropriate to me. Um, so, uh, one night I came home and this was, this was, uh, in the winter time. So it was getting darker late, um, earlier. And so I was going out to my car. There was this massive, massive parking lot and it was dark and I'm four foot nine. Well, right now I weigh 103 pounds, so I'm tiny. But back then I probably weighed like, I don't know, 97 or 98 pounds because I was working so much. I was working at Sears and doing the casino thing, um, trying to save money. So I'm teeny, teeny, tiny. It's dark. I'm walk walking out to this parking lot and I was starting to get scared. Um, anyways, I drove home and I'm standing there. I remember getting at home and going into my room and I look down and I've got this this white shirt on and it's got coffee stains on it. It's got, it stinks like coffee and tea and cigarettes because you could smoke, um, in this place. And I had to clean the ashtrays. Um, and I was just exhausted and I'm just like, Heavenly Father, like I'll keep doing this, but I'm just, I'm just, this is just, I don't want to do this. And so Heavenly Father's like, Bev, I'm sure he's probably like, Oh, bless your heart. You're trying so hard. Like, the idea of faith without works is, is dead like that. The idea of that, yes, that's true. Or that doctrine is true, but your works, Beth, your works are dead because look at what you're doing. This is not like you're unsafe and you're serving coffee and tea and getting cigarettes spilt all over you and all the ashtrays and, and then you'd, you know, you'd get these high rollers in and they would tip, but they would also, I mean, they never like touched me or grabbed at me, but they would say inappropriate things to me. And he was like that. This is not the way. It's not the way. So I quit that job and ended up getting a job um, as a preschool teacher. And and anyways, my miracle happened. But I the point of this, of me telling you this story, is that I was trying so hard to get this miracle going that I went about it the wrong way. And, and, and that's okay because Heavenly Father showed me. So where do we see this in the scriptures? We also see this with um, Jacob and the birthright. Right. So I'm not going to go into all of that because the video would be too long. But if you go to don't miss this um, and they're uh, they have a great um, podcast where they share and they teach this lesson and it's really good. And so I'm going to put up a timestamp of kind of where it starts. It's like uh, you skip like the first 32 minutes of it and then it goes right into Jacob and Esau and the birthright. And, and I ended up watching it this morning. I watched it all the way through. So, you know, I, I would say, you know, just watch it all the way through. It's really, really good. And you can take notes and you can say, okay, I know that this is my blessing, my prayer, my miracle, but I just have to work at it the right way and not the wrong way. Right. Okay. So now that we've covered that, let's say, um, because sometimes you have this, this miracle that you're promised or that you're praying for. And sometimes he doesn't want you to work so hard at it. Sometimes it's like that scripture, um, be still and know that I'm God. And sometimes when you are being, you're trying to be still and wait, sometimes that's like the worst part of a miracle. It's like, it can be torturous because you're just waiting. You're like, I'm just, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, right? Cause that can be really hard. Um, but just remember that prayer is enough. Sometimes that's all he wants you to do. Just pray and wait. So what do we do while we're waiting for that miracle? Well, there's a lot of things that we can do. Um, we can give service. We know that. Uh, we can serve in the temple. We can do, if you're not temple worthy, you can do family history work. You know, sometimes you just need to pray. Okay, Heavenly Father, like right now I'm having so much anxiety and um, you know what I call it? I call it um, scrambled eggs. That's what I am. <laughs> sometimes my mind just feels like it's scrambled eggs and I, and I can't make decisions. Well, if I pray, then I'm like, okay, Heavenly Father, please put like a service opportunity in front of me so that I can distract my mind while I'm waiting for this, this prayer or this blessing to be answered. Um, another one is, oh, 
while you're praying, um, try a vocal prayer. I did a video, an interview with Troy Abels on his channel about vocal prayer. Um, so that's in my playlist. You're welcome to, to look at that. But before, if you decide to go and watch that, listen, I don't know what it was about that video, but for some reason I was really nervous and you, you can tell, you can see it. So just ignore the nerves. Even Troy afterwards, he was like, Beth, you were really nervous. I don't know why. Cause you did great. That was a great like chat that we had, but I could tell you were really nervous. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why I was so nervous, but it's good talking that whole um, conversation that we have about vocal prayer is good. Um, what's the last thing? I know music. Um, so sometimes if you're in that mode where you're, where you feel like it's scrambled eggs, like you can't concentrate, uh, sometimes all you can do is just turn on music and there's a scripture in Doctrine and Covenants. Um, I think it's the one that in that, I think it's in the section where, where he's speaking to Emma. I think so. And he says something like, um, the song of the righteous shall be answered as a prayer unto them. Something like that. So if you're, if you're, if you can't, like if you're so messed up that you don't even know how, how to pray right now, um, then turn on a song. I love music and I have some playlists. So you're welcome to check those out. Sometimes I have them private. Sometimes I have them public because I do that because sometimes some of my Christian music is a little more, um, like Pentecostal. And I don't know why I get so worried that like people will judge me. I don't, it's that silly. That's ridiculous. But sometimes I like some of those upbeat, um, Christian songs. So sometimes it's hard to sleep when you're in here waiting for your miracle. But, um, I promise you that God is a God of miracles because he doesn't change. And if there were miracles then, then there are miracles today. So be patient and have faith in the Lord. And I say that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen.